have been following me long enough, then you know that I'm a massive fan of foldables, especially the flipping ones. As a female, the portability side of flip phones is something I find very practical. And when Oppo launched this phone, the Find N2 Flip, I instantly got it for myself and have since been using it as my secondary phone alongside my other test phones. Honestly, I am really impressed with what Oppo has been able to achieve with their first ever flip phone. Here, Oppo has somehow managed to overcome some significant limitations of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. Yes, I'm talking about the crease, the battery life, and the cover screen. First, let me talk about the cover screen. I think this is probably the biggest on a flip phone to date at 3.26 inches, which means you get a lot of room to do stuff and things don't have to look cramped. For example, taking a high-risk selfie or shooting a selfie video is much more convenient here than, say, the Z Flip 4. I also felt that it is more natural to use a vertical cover screen than a horizontal one. I do admit that it does not look as pretty as the Z Flip 4, but then again, at the end of the day, it's all about usability and convenience, which I think Oppo has struck the right balance of. Even quality-wise, this cover screen is uh, bright and responsive, so I am pretty happy about it. Next, the crease, or should I say the absence of a crease. Having used Samsung's flip phones year after year, something I had to get used to and settle was the presence of the crease, and I uh, kind of had trained my mind to ignore its presence, but not on this phone. Here, you can barely feel anything close to a crease. It is visible when you look at it from certain angles, but when you're interacting with the screen, it feels like a normal phone. Likewise, Oppo says that they've used a new generation Flexon hinge for controlling the crease, and also this gapless design, which you can see looks very uniform when comparing side by side with the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Plus, this gapless design also means that there is literally no dust getting accumulated on it. Talking about folding, Oppo says that the Fine N2 Flip is TUV Rainland certified for up to 400,000 folds, so long-term durability should not be an issue here, at least in theory. Now, I have been using this phone only for about two to three weeks, so I can't really confirm its durability just yet. But yeah, if any new developments come forth in our long-term usage, I will definitely let you guys know through a pinned comment. Third, the battery life on the Oppo Find N2 Flip is actually good. Now, when I say good, I mean it's good for a flip phone. It carries a 4300mAh battery that gave me around 5 hours of screen on time in my everyday usage. Um, in comparison, the Galaxy Z Flip 4 only provided me with a maximum of 4 hours of screen on time. Now, to put things into context, I am someone who's into watching YouTube and Netflix a lot. I am always scrolling through my social media pages and I get a lot of calls and texts and I also click a lot of pictures. So uh, doing all that, this phone would get me through morning till evening when I reach home. This is not bad at all considering its compact size and the fact that it has to power two displays. Charging it is fast too, with the 44 watt wire charger, which by the way you get inside the box, the phone can go from 0 to 100% in about an hour. Okay, now talking about other general things, the design of the Fine N2 Flip is certainly robust, although it is a bit slippery and would slide out of my trousers time and again. Either way, ergonomically, it feels good on the hands and it's got a nice heft too. Um, now, I do have to mention that I like the Z Flip 4's heft a little more, but this one's pretty good as well. Oppo has left very less room to complain about the main display too. It's a 6.8-inch E6 AMOLED panel with 120Hz refresh rate, LTPO refresh rate tech, and a maximum brightness of 1600 nits. Plus, this screen is also not as narrow as the Z Flip 4, so for me, it did not actually feel that different from a regular smartphone. The only thing that's a little different here is that it unfolds to an unusual 21 is to 9 aspect ratio, which means black bars are more prominent while watching um, content on YouTube and OTT platforms. Other than that, the phone has stereo speakers which sound alright. They are loud, a little sharp for my taste, but okay for watching movies and casually listening to music. 
For the cameras, the Oppo Find N2 Flip has the same 50 megapixel primary sensor as the OnePlus 11, that too with Hasselblad color calibration. So for the most part, I like the photos coming out from its main lens. I compared it against the Galaxy Z Flip 4 and well, the pictures from both the phones stand out in their own way. Both phones produce a punchy output with good white levels and acceptable dynamic range. Of course, the photos are not flagship level. It lacks a telephoto lens for taking portraits, but in my experience, the Find N2 Flip has been a reliable performer overall and almost as good as the Galaxy Z Flip 4. However, I found Samsung doing better in terms of the ultra-wide-angle images and that's because Oppo has used a pretty basic 8 megapixel sensor here which we usually find on mid-range phones. When it comes to taking selfies, I barely use the selfie camera on the Find N2 Flip and that's because I would always use the back cameras to take high-resolution selfies and I love the output. You will notice a bit of smoothening here and there in the selfies, but the final result is just wonderful. Oppo also lets you use the palm gesture to take selfies and portraits from the back camera, which has been really handy for me, especially when I want to take a picture of myself when no one's around. You can also shoot videos from the back camera using the cover screen, but the output is only limited to 1080p 30fps for some reason. I particularly found that strange since the rear camera is capable of shooting 4K 30fps footages when unfolded. I think the option to shoot in higher resolution would have been excellent for vloggers, tiktokers or just content creators in general. Anyway, I found the performance on the Oppo Find N2 Flip to be satisfactory too. The Dimensity 9000 Plus is a reliable performer for everyday chores and even for gaming, you're not going to be disappointed. I played Genshin Impact on it in medium settings and it was giving me like stable 30 FPS. I tried the game in higher settings too, but um, even though the gameplay was stable enough, I experienced a little bit of heating near the camera module. Anyway, I had a good experience playing other relatively optimized games like PUBG and Call of Duty though. Even in the highest settings, there would be negligible heating and the FPS numbers were good too. Oppo's software has also come a long way. Along with like regular customization options, you get a few flip exclusive features here like flex form video streaming, flex form video calling and flex form camera, which are very similar to what the Galaxy Z Flip 4 provides. Now something I find really cute is the digital pets feature that lets you choose between a bunch of wallpaper options with different pet animations. I particularly enjoyed it because the animations change with what state the phone is in. For example, if the battery is low, the dog or cat would be sad. Uh, when the battery is full, the animal would be ready to play, etc. So every time I looked at the cover screen, it would show me something different, which actually made me smile. Oppo has also committed four years of major color OS and five years of regular security updates on the Find N2 Flip, which is actually on par with what Samsung provides on their high-end flagships, so I am quite happy about that too. Okay, by now I've talked about all the good things about the Oppo Find N2 Flip, but we have to keep in mind that this is Oppo's first generation flip phone and there are some things that need further refinement. For instance, it would have been great if the phone in its flex form could stand still at all angles, but it cannot do so at less than 30 degrees inwards or outwards. This would have really been useful to take creative photos or videos from a lower angle. Apart from that, there are only a handful of things that you can do with this cover screen. You can access the quick toggle menu, check notifications and reply to them partially. Um, then we have the camera widget, weather, timer and music control and that's basically it. On the other hand, Samsung lets you do a lot more from their tiny cover screen. From being able to dial your favorite contacts to grouping similar notifications together, Samsung gives you a slightly more refined experience. Oppo says that they are working on it, so let's hope that happens soon. Likewise, in the videography department, the Find N2 Flip is limited to 4K 30fps recordings from the rear primary camera and you also don't have the option for 4K recording from the ultra-wide-angle camera. Even from the front, the videos are limited to just 1080p 30fps. 
Now, the quality of the videos across all these lenses is not bad per se, but given the price point and the competition, Oppo can definitely do better in their next generation flip phone. Okay, so with this, I've come to the end of this video. And as I said in the beginning, I am really impressed with what Oppo has been able to achieve with their first ever flip phone. It addresses a lot of issues that even Samsung, despite their head start in foldables, has not been able to crack. So I genuinely think that Oppo is in the right direction. With a little more fine tuning in the design, cameras and software side of things, Oppo does seem to have a good future in the foldable space. So everyone, that is all for my full review of the all new Oppo Find N2 Flip. If you had a choice between these two foldables, which one would you go for or would you not go for a foldable at all? Do let us know in the comments below. Till then, I'm Prathima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.